In this video, we are going to take a look at a young uh, voiceover artist who primarily focuses on animation and video games. That is her thing. Uh, she's a very much an artist, and she's into animation and drawing um, herself, but she is, is starting to do, she said for about a year she's been doing uh, voiceover for animation and video games. And she's come to me uh, to help her with her voice sound. And we're going to take a look at uh, what she's working with. She had some problems uh, with levels, and we fixed that. And I'm going to walk you through what we've done to really optimize her voice. And I want you to hear her, hear her voice. I, I'm, um, I'm a fan of her voice. And then a little later on in the video, um, not only are we going to get a chance to meet her, but she's also going to tell us about how she's getting gigs, which is um, it kind of opened my eyes a little bit, and I want to share that with you. This here is the very first clip that Marissa sent to me. It was, um, the recording level was way too low. Just looking at the file compared to, um, this is a, a proper recording level on the right side here, but this is the very first file she sent me. And you can see that just by visually, I can see right away the recording level is very low. Now that, uh, that visual is going to depend on how much you're zoomed in and out and what DAW you're using. But I, I just know right away, this is going to be pretty low. So let me play it for you, and we'll keep our eye on the input meter here, so you can see, uh, we'll, we'll watch the true peak meter and see what kind of level we've got uh, when I play this back. Hi, my name is Marissa Hurtado. I'm based out of San Marcos, Texas, in the United States. So we're peaking at negative 18.7. It's really low, and uh, what I've done here in this second clip, I want to draw your attention to, I copied this first clip to the second uh, location here. So this is a duplicate, but I've raised this clip uh, 13 decibels. So I've, I've had to raise post recording level, I've had to raise the amplitude of this clip to where I really need it to hit the plugins at the right spot. So when we play this one back. Answer, Mike. The audio interface used to record this is a SSL 2x2 USB interface. So you can see we're just under negative six, which is great. That's exactly what I need. But what I want to draw your attention to here is the silence. If you look at this original clip and you look at the silence, you don't see anything. It looks visually, it doesn't look like there's any problem. But when I get it to the proper recording level, you could see how much noise is apparent. That's, um, that's quiet. And visually, I can see that there's noise there. And if I play that, let's see if that registers. You know, it's actually, it's not too bad. It doesn't register all that bad on the, um, on the meter. Now this third clip is a second submission that Marissa sent me. And this is recorded at a proper recording level. So this was the, this here is the first clip she sent me too low. I raised the first clip up here uh, to, to reach the proper level. I had to raise it 13 decibels. So we had a conversation. I explained to her why we need a proper recording level. And this is uh, the correction. So this is the second submission that she sent me, but she turned her gain up about 13 um, decibels to get a proper recording level. And visually, you can see the space between her words has a lot less noise visually. So if I had to raise it up myself, it increases the noise here. And we saw that noise floor is like 58. And let's uh, let's play back the noise floor here on this clip. And it should be much lower. Yeah, 62. So I mean, even three, two, three decibels is an improvement. So the takeaway here is getting a proper recording level not only helps me or you hit those plugins at a sweet spot and be consistent, but it also helps reduce the noise in your system. I have a blog post that walks you through how to uh, get that proper recording level, and I'll put that link in the description if uh, you've got any questions or maybe you just want to review it. But um, that's one thing that I wanted to point out in this video. So what I want to do before we actually uh, listen to our second submission, which was done at the the right recording level, I want to play for you her first submission. And this kind of drew my attention more than usual. I, I became a, a quick fan of Marissa, and I'll tell you why. Let's listen to what she sent. Hi, my name is Marissa Hurtado. I'm based out of San Marcos, Texas in the United States. The microphone used to record the audio you're hearing now is a Shure SM27 diaphragm condenser mic. You know, listening to her speak, she has, she's very sure of herself. She's got confidence. And I think, I think, she, um, I think she just Boy, I hope she doesn't get mad for me saying her date. Let's just say she's in her mid-20s. This is what drew me to um, look a little bit deeper and look a little further into what she's doing. But my overall goal is to make my voice audio recordings more professional and clear. That way, uh, casting directors don't skip over it for shitty audio. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so, I don't know. That just 
for some reason that struck me that so much of her personality came through there and she was a little embarrassed, uh, but she just laughed at herself. It was very real. I, 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 mean, I don't know if it's, it struck you like that. Here's how I would sum it up. I felt like when I listened to that clip, I knew exactly who she really was. She wasn't on. Do, do you know what I mean? She wasn't, uh, she wasn't a character. That was like really her. I, I thought that was very sincere and honest and just laughing at herself. She's like, whatever, let's just do this. I'm, I felt I was hearing her 100% true personality. So that made me become a fan for some reason. And I just like the tone of her voice and stuff too. So now let's listen to, this is raw again. There's no uh, processing. So now let's hear her second submission overall and average levels much better. Okay, let's try this again. Hi, my name is Marissa Hurtado. I'm based out of San Marcos, Texas. The microphone that I'm currently using is a Shure SM27 condenser mic. And the audio interface is an SSL 2x2 interface. So at this point, I kind of became even more of a fan of Marissa just because I really love that gritty kind of gravelly, husky voice she's got. It's almost breaking up a little bit. I don't know if she was at a concert the night before screaming or maybe she's in a rock band and the vocalist. I, I don't know. But there's just something about that gravelly voice that really makes her stand out and makes her sound different to me. And I kind of dig it. It's a, it's a vibe. It's its own sound. Um, and also, I was struck by, um, with the equipment that she's using, she's got a very good sound. And what I heard right away was like, wow, I think this is going to be, this is going to process well. So let me walk you through um, what I've done for her processing. And then we're going to meet uh, Marissa in just a second here. So none of the plugins that I decided to use are going to be a surprise to you. I've got the F6 floating band dynamic EQ. And uh, I've reduced some of the uh, resonance uh, spaces in her room. And I've cut quite a bit of energy out here. And I, I want to tell you um, a little bit about that. It seems like, wow, there's a lot of cuts going on. Seems like there's a lot uh, being cut out, a lot of energy here. And there is, but I'm also replenishing that energy by boosting the entire output of the EQ by three decibels. So let me play for you the before and after with just this EQ so you can see the difference here. Let me switch this real quick. I'll make it a little bit smaller so I can do two things at once here. Okay, so I'll start without the EQ engaged and then I'll, I'll, I'll switch it on so you can hear the difference. Okay, let's try this again. Hi, my name is Marissa Hurtado. I'm based out of San Marcos, Texas. The microphone that I'm currently using is a Shure SM27 condenser mic and the audio interface is an SSL 2x2 interface. The reason I love creating voice recordings is I love having the opportunity to just become someone or something entirely different than who I am in real life. It's really interesting to hear what that EQ change does. It's actually not much of a change. Um, it sound, because I'm remo removing so much of a low energy, it's like the, the clarity and the brightness opens up. And the, um, um, the, there was a couple low resonance spaces that were really punchy and powerful and I kind of balance things out and I just like it has more of an even kind of feel to it but it definitely even what I like about it is it it even drew it draws you in even further to that raspy voice and it, and it puts to me the sound is it's more like in your face it feels more present and I, I just like the way that came out now that was just the EQ I haven't added any DSing or compression or anything we'll add that next but um, let me play those two um let me play those two once again for you before and after uh, the EQ. Okay, let's try this again. Hi, my name is Marissa Hurtado. I'm based out of San Marcos, Texas. The microphone that I'm currently using is a Shure SM27 condenser mic, and the audio interface is an SSL 2x2 interface. The reason I love creating voice recordings is I love having the opportunity to just become someone or something entirely different than who I am in real life. I think that's really fun. Yeah, so it really clears things up. And I do feel, though, that there may be a little sibilance um, that's kind of harsh at this point. And so that's where my other go-to uh, plug-in, the Sheps Omnichannel, comes into play. I've added a little bit of saturation, not a lot, to warm the bottom up a little bit. Now, what that does is it's a light amount of distortion, and it, it just warms things up a little bit. Uh, we've got an expander that is not, uh, it's not used very heavily, but it's just to quiet the portions in between her words. So if there is any noise, and we looked at the noise floor, it wasn't much of a problem, but this just kind of pushes it down, I think, 6 to 12 dB uh, when she's not speaking. 
Now the de-esser, I found the frequency. Let me show you uh, what I do with that. So if I play her um, audio and look at the spectrum analyzer, I'm going to try to find out where that sibilance is. Um, and you can if you just monitor where her S's appear on the uh, uh, frequency on the spectrum analyzer. Different than who I am in real life. I think that's really fun. Uh, the type of voiceover that I am most drawn to is... 64 kilohertz is probably about where I set that de -esser. Let's see what I did here. Yeah, 67, 78, a little higher than that. Is character or narrative. And then what I did is I, I added some more air, and I really love that breathiness in her voice that comes through. We have increased some of the clarity just uh, under 1K, which is really mid-range. Um, I've removed more of the heaviness, and that's down in the 300 hertz range, and then I've bumped up just above 100. This is that warmth, low-end bass um, in her voice. We've used a VCA compressor, and I'm probably getting, we'll take a look at this in a second, I'm probably getting 1 to 2 dB of reduction. It's not hitting very heavy. And then I've probably added an opto compressor, yes, at the end here, really to warm things up even further. And let's listen now. Um, I will, uh, let's start with just the EQ, and then I'll engage the Shep's Omnichannel in and out so you can see the difference um, in what that's offering the voiceover. It's an SSL 2x2 interface. The reason I love creating voice recordings is I love having the opportunity to just become someone or something entirely different than who I am in real life. I think that's really fun. Uh, the type of voiceover that I am most drawn to is character or narrative voices. What I noticed there is with that combined EQ and the two other compressors that are used very lightly, to me, it just sounds like it's putting her voice even more right in front of your face. It's a very intimate uh, kind of a sound. And I, I think um, I hear a lot, and I, I'm doing this, this is my interpretation of what I think sounds really good. I love the high-end breathiness in her voice, so I'm pushing that very forward, yet the de is making sure that there's not much harshness. Um, hearing it now a, a day or two after I've processed it, I might back off a little on those highs. So let me play uh, now engaging and disengaging the entire preset. And I'm going to back this. I'm going to back off the highs just a little bit. That's bothering me. Okay. Um, so here's without, completely raw, and then we'll engage uh, the custom preset that I've done for her. Okay. Let's try this again. Hi, my name is Marissa Hurtado. I'm based out of San Marcos, Texas. The microphone that I'm currently using is a Shure SM27 condenser mic, and the audio interface is an SSL 2x2 interface. The reason I love creating voice recordings is I love having the opportunity to just become someone or something entirely different. I'll tell you this. <laughs> I love the way it sounds. Um, I would not argue with you if you said, well, I like the way her voice sounded without any processing. I think she has a good recording, and that sounds fine, too. Um, I will tell you that a lot of times a polished sound like this that sounds really forward can be used in several different situations for demos. Um, if you're doing um, uh, auditions, you know, a polished, finished type of sound can help in those situations. So you can do both. You know, a lot of times clients, I, I get this question a lot, you know, I thought clients ask for um, unprocessed files. Why would I want to do this to my voice? Well, it just depends on the situation. A lot of clients do, but there's also some clients who are not going to do any processing at all, and they, they're they looking for it. It really depends on the project and where it's going. So uh, to be able to have this as an option, especially if you're in a competing situation, it could be really powerful and can help sometimes be the difference uh, between getting and not getting the gig, winning the audition. So even though her preset is complete, she actually doesn't have it yet. I'm going to send it to her um, uh, really soon here, along with install instructions and, and just the details of how to get it running smoothly on her machine. But I actually had a chance to speak with her, and I wanted to share with you something that she told me that I found really interesting. Um, we have a custom processing preset that's coming your way. Uh, maybe the next day or so, we're going to get that set up. So first of all, thank you for coming to me. How, how did you hear about me, by the way? Uh, well, I was really frustrated with my whole, um, audio setup. So I was just Googling frantically. I'm like, okay, how do I make this better? And then yours was the first channel that popped up on YouTube. And then I was listening to your stuff. I'm like, oh my God, this is really good. And then I saw that you had a website and that you were offering this service. I was like, okay, well, I have to reach out because I'd be upset with myself if I didn't. So, so 
Marissa, can I use your last name? Is it okay if we put your yeah. info out there? Marissa mm-hmm. or Hurtado. Is that yes. pronouncing it correctly? And then uh, if, if people want to get in touch with you, um, first of all, I'm a fan of your presentation. When I heard your voice, I go, wow, you've got something that's really special. You've got this. I'll, I'll tell you, this is what I hear. Um, you've got this kind of little gravelly kind of grit that is very earthy. There's something about your voice that I, I really like. And once I processed it, I'm like, wow. And then also, I will t- and I think I told you this over the phone before, your personality I think you made a mistake and you started laughing. You were laughing at yourself or something. And there's so much personality came through. I was really struck by that. And if you could harness that, Marissa, I think you're a shoe in and you're going to be successful, which you've already experienced um, some success already. I want to talk about that. But if for some reason people want to reach out and hear your voice or to uh, just give you some props and say, hey, great job and and, and become a fan, wh- where do people see you? How, how do people get in touch with you? Uh, the main way you can get in touch with me is on uh, Twitter. That is uh, at Scarpone Draws. So it's C S A R P O N E D R A W S. So you're more than welcome okay. to reach out via there, message me, or just at me, and that's the main way I communicate. Are you are you into animation? I get just the draws. I'm asking about draws. Is that what's your is that your thing? And I see yeah. pictures in the background behind you there. Yeah, so um, I've got a couple things. I've got one from uh, Ruby in the back corner over there. I've got some Call of Duty posters signed from other voice actors that I really like. Wow. Um, I got a Critical One, that Critical Role poster that just came in, so I can't wait to hang that up. I've got like a, cool. a wall of fame. <laughs> so animation, voiceover is is something that you're really into, and you are you are a creative person. You you just you like the animation. You like the, the creativity and the storytelling and the whole thing. Well, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to um, invite you to just kind of make an appearance here in one of my videos. I want to share this. Um, would you tell us how you are going about? So you've been, how you're going about getting gigs. This is very interesting to me. Uh, you've been doing voiceover seriously for about a year now. But mm-hmm. when I asked you, are, are you working off of platforms? Tell me how you're getting gigs. So um, on social media, Twitter is my main source of finding these casting calls. I follow other voice actors that I have worked on projects with, or I just follow other voice actors that I really admire. Every now and then they'll be tweeting stuff like, hey, there's this project right now that they're looking for voice actors, is what they're looking for. And then throughout the week when I'm working, I just kind of make a list of all the things where I'm like, okay, this seems like something I would fit into. And then at the end of the week, whenever I have free time, I just kind of sit down in my booth and audition for all of them and send them out. It's it's really using social media and Twitter specifically to just reach out and make connections and, and network really is what you're doing. And then mm-hmm. the friends and then the opportunities kind of show up. How awesome is that? And then I imagine you must also tweet who you are and let people know what you're interested in, what your specialty is. How do you communicate that? What do you do when you post stuff? Oh, when I post stuff, um, I just, I try to be me as much as possible. I try to share all my interests uh, it's mainly dog photos 90% of the time. Everyone loves dog photos. So yeah, I just I just kind of keep it really chill. I'm just like, this is who I am and this is something I love to do. So I feel like that makes it easier to connect with people on that level. Well, just just hearing your voice, and I know we're only, you're not on a mic, you're, you're just using yeah. the computer or your phone or whatever we're listening. I could just, I could hear that style that you have and there's something that's very, Marissa, about your voice. It's just you've got your own little style, and that's just really cool. I'm a fan. Um, I'm excited to hear um, how um, the preset and the new confidence that you're going to have with your new sound is going to help you moving forward. So we'll keep in touch, and um, you're going to get your preset and let me know what you think. And uh, what what would you tell people that are just starting? Like, they're like, hey, I'm going to start doing this seriously. I got to get out there. Like, because... I bet you were a little apprehensive. What what helped you kind of start putting yourself out there and then you started getting a little bit of traction and you got some gigs? What would you tell somebody that is just starting? Um, Stop waiting. I feel like I was making excuses for the longest time because I'm like, oh, I don't think I have, you know, the right voice. It's like, you're, it, it's your voice. You can do whatever you want with it. And just being consistent with it, you know, you're not always going to see results right off the bat. But as long as you know, 
finding classes, coaches, and really just practicing your craft, you're going to start seeing an improvement and you're going to start uh, getting the roles that you're really looking for. So yeah, well, and have fun with it. Yeah, I, I love your attitude and, I, and I'm a fan and I'm on your team. So, um, you know, now you're a client, you've got audio questions or about anything, um, you, you know, you just let me know and we'll keep in touch. And also, I like when people share success stories and stuff. So you keep me updated on all that as well. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> awesome, Marissa. Good luck with everything. And we'll be talking soon. And thanks for having uh, this chat on the, on the YouTube channel with me. Of course. Thanks for having me.